This is Berth 193, home of Boatswain Edel and the Maritime Preservation Trust. We are located at the southwest end of the East Turning Basin and at the mouth of the Dominguez Channel. This channel by far is the largest channel that empties into the Port of Los Angeles. During even a normal rain event, tens of thousands of cubic yards of water are carried down this channel into the Port of Los Angeles. And they carry with them literally tons of plastics and debris. Any interception that's being done up channel is definitely not enough. As the debris is carried through the port, it finds its way under the piers and around the marinas and docks. As lovers of the sea, the waters we sail on and the waters we swim in, this is incredibly disheartening. Here at Berth 193, we do our best to collect this debris from around the boats and pick it up along the shoreline. But it is an endless and overwhelming task. Much of the plastics and debris make their way out to sea during the rain event straight away. However, the debris that has gotten caught underneath the piers comes out to haunt us every time there's a plus tide. Plastics are constantly going out of the Port of Los Angeles year-around during the ebb tides. The debris needs to be intercepted, collected, and processed during and immediately after a rain event. There is another problem here in the port, and that is with abandoned boats. The port's current method of dealing with abandoned boats leaves a lot to be desired. It obviously is not in compliance with any of the current environmental regulations. Because we are close neighbors, we are constantly dealing with the debris from this facility that floats into our area. In a recent meeting with the head of construction and maintenance here at the Port of Los Angeles, Tim Clark stated he would be very grateful if this burdensome task was lifted off of his shoulders. We are overwhelmed and understaffed. The port has no training programs or apprenticeship programs in place to help supply the workforce needs of construction and maintenance here in the port. This facility is very limited in the size of boats they can deal with. Under 50 foot is all they can handle. Some of the boats are really not that bad. They could be hauled off to a yard inland where they could be resold or parted out. But this yard has no way to haul the boats out and get them on a trailer. The boats are broken up, put into bins, and go off to the landfill. We do have a solution to this pollution problem, and it can be solved by the two tenants that are currently here. Paul Gillen owns and operates Associated Pacific, a marine construction business. Paul and his team have designed and built travel lift yards before, and he has been kind enough to put together an estimate for building a state-of-the-art travel lift yard. Featuring a 200-ton travel lift that could handle large marine debris, complete with large concrete cleaning pads, catchment sumps, and a water filtration system. Yes, a first-class marine debris processing facility. We here at the Maritime Preservation Trust have a well-trained team that can disassemble, salvage, and recycle these classic watercraft. This is a very good way to teach the young apprentice all about the boats and how they work by dissecting them. This facility could create over a hundred jobs and bring a whole new generation into the marine repair and maintenance sector of the port. The yard would be managed and operated by the Maritime Preservation Trust. We are a well-established 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation of our maritime heritage and the education of youth of all ages in to the maritime professions. We have many members that are qualified and willing to make this endeavor an incredible success. 
stormwater debris that would be gathered by booms and nets could be hoisted onto the pad, where it would drain and dry and then be separated into the appropriate recycling bins. Boats that aren't that bad could be put on trailers and hauled off to an auction yard. Other boats could be properly salvaged and then run through chippers that separate the dust for recycling. This yard would also be available to haul out port boats, the training ships, and research vessels. It would be a training facility for marine maintenance and repair. It would be a very noble use of this land and this water space that would benefit the maritime community, the local community, and the environment. Because the two tenants here are long-term tenants of the port, this project could and should be fast-tracked. There are grant funds available from NOAA specifically for marine debris interception and the handling and disposal of large marine debris. Currently, there are plans of putting a slag cement processing plant here, featuring open piles of slag, a grinding machine, a firing kiln, and equipment to load slag cement into trucks. This processing plant is not water dependent and would be better placed inland in an arid environment where it would pose no threat to the marine environment or the local community. This project would only add to the pollution in this area and it would deny our maritime community this great opportunity to protect the oceans we love. <laughs>